May I say this, and I don't know if I'll get in trouble, but okay, it won't be the first thing I say that gets me in trouble. We have religious Jews who are also Tinoikos Shemishmo. From Yidin who have been Tinoikos Shemishmo, I have seen Bachrim who were indoctrinated with such venom to Israeli soldiers. The Yeshiva.net. Joining us now is Rabbi Y.Y. Jacobson. Rabbi Jacobson is a hugely popular speaker and insightful commentator on current events. And because our show is all about Hakarasa Tov, Rabbi Jacobson, I want to thank you for always being there for Klal Yisrael, being a true source of inspiration during difficult times, including Corona. I will tell you, my daughter watched your Q&A avidly. And when I was going upstairs, I said, I have to get on a Zoom. She said, with who? I said, with, with Rabbi Y.Y. Jacobson. She could not believe it. She said, wow. I think she wanted to join us. So thank you for being there for Klal Yisrael during Corona. And since October 7th, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. My honor and pleasure. Thank you for having me, Rabari. A, a privilege and pleasure. So wh why don't we start with a very basic question. There's a tug of war, it seems, between some Rosh Yeshiva, some saying that Torah is a shmira, and that's all we need. And others are saying that we need to show hakaras atov for the chayalim. And uh, it's not all about learning. It is all about learning, but we also need to protect ourselves, and we need to be active on the on the uh, with the military. We need to be out there and protecting actively. Clearly. So, so where does this concept of Torah learning protects? It's a shmira. Where does that come from? And if that's a hundred percent a blanket shmira, why does Israel need an army? Wonderful question. To start off, I have to say that uh, I feel that having this conversation itself is very, very painful. Um, I believe, you know, there are questions that need answers, and there are questions that it's a non-starter, like, like in the language of Chazal, Kush, Kushime Karales. <laughs> um, the entire notion and even the debate about it is, is very painful for me personally. I think it's a sad commentary on us and our communities and maybe on some parts of our educational system. And I say this with a lot of pain. I could start crying when I say this. Um, the fact that it's even up for debate. You may know the Gewaldike Torah by Reb Chaim Shmulevich, Zechit Tzadik Levracha, the Rosh Hashiva of Mir. It's in Sechis Musar, where he explains why it was only Chushim, the son of Dun, who was a deaf grandson. And according to Pirkei de Rebbe Liezer, chapter 29, he was also mute. He was the only one who stood up to Esau. The only one. You had Yosef, the most powerful person in the world on the par. You had Yehuda, a legendary warrior. All the Shvatim, Shimon and Levi, they took down Shechem. Nobody stood up to Esau, who was a liar, <laughs> trying to steal once again Maris HaMachpelah from his brother Yaakov, after Yaakov's passing. There was only one grandson who was deaf, according to Gemara and to Daf Yud Gimel, and mute, according to Pirkei Rebbe Lezer, who stood up to Esau. Rav Chaim Shmulevich said, very, very sadly and powerfully, he said, because he, he was the only one who did not get schlepped in to the two sides, to the conversation. He was deaf. The other ones, as great as they were, truly great giants, the Shifte Yutke, they became part of the debate. Esau has a question, we have an answer, he's saying a lie, he's saying the truth. Chushim was deaf. He remained sensitive to the acute horror of the moment. Yaakov's Levi has to be postponed for a few days. The Gemara says, Avi Abba, mutal bebizoyin. Yaakov is being disgraced till Naftali comes back from Mitzrayim with the, with the deed. He couldn't tolerate that. And Reb Chaim teaches, and I think it's a very profound point, that sometimes, you know, the very conversation is already the problem. Like the very conversation. We should have this conversation because I think we all need to be enlightened and all be educated. But I just want to identify how painful it is for me to hear this question. <laughs> and now that I said that, and I got that off my chest, uh, of course, the answer is Parshas B'chukaisai. Parshas B'chukaisai begins in B'chukaisai Teilechu, Ves Mitzvaisai Tishmeru, Vasisem Oisam, Uridaftem Esaveichem, Venofel Ufnechem Lechore, Viratfu Mechem Chamisha Meya, Umei Mechem Revava Yidufa, Venoflu Oivechem Lufnechem Lechore. Which means, in simple English, if you follow my statues, you observe my mitzvahs, and you follow them, and Rashi brings from Tyrus Kainim, it includes both the immersion in Torah and in mitzvahs. This is the, great, the greatest weapon that the Jewish people have for eternity, where the Rebbeinah Shalom says, you v'nasati shalom ba'aretz, or shchavtem ve'in ma'chirit, but the same Pesach says, v'nafluh lefneichem lecharev. 
your enemies will fall before you by the sword. You'll be pursuing them. So right here in this Pasuk, we have that eternal partnership between doing what we're doing, using the natural resources that Hashem gave us to defeat a Nazi, to defeat a sworn enemy that wants to destroy every single Jew. Just like we're celebrating Hanukkah and the Hashemenai, Matasio, Benyechen, and Kohen Gadol, and his sons went and fought a war to defeat the enemy. The Gemara in Sanhedrin, the Fayyim Beis, in Bala Hargach, Hashkem Lahargo, you have to kill him. You have to go kill him. The Shulchan Aruch, Erechaim, Simon Shin Chavtas, Hilcha Shabbos, which was written for Galas. This is Simon Shin Chavtas and Shulchan Aruch. It's not Hilcha Zilam and Shikha, not Hilcha Zilam and Mikdash. Nachrim Shatsaru, Alayaris Yisrael, you have to be Mechalal Shabbos, Yoitzim Aleyim, Beklay Zion, O Mechalal in Aleyim, it's a Shabbos, because Pikuach Nefesh of even one soul, Doiche Kola Terekula. And this is even if Bo, at least Kekash Vetevin, they came to steal some straw to feed their animals. That's all they want. But as the Munich Shulchan Aruch says, it's from Gemara in Eriv and Daf Memhe. If it's ir hasmucha lesfar, meaning if there's even a potential danger that one Jewish community will be in danger on Shabbos, everyone, whoever can, is mechuyiv to go out with weapons and be mechalal Shabbos, chilo Shabbos minatayra. Why? Because of the suffix of pikoach nefesh. The Gemara in Sanhedrin, Daf Memtes says, il male David lo yasa yoyev melcham, il male yoyev lo yasa David betayra. So for Sugi in Sanhedrin, a fascinating Gemara. There is an eternal partnership. Torah Magno Matzolos, the Gemara says in Saita, Ela Berechav Ela Vasuzim Vanachnu B'Shem Hashem Alekeinu Nasker, and the same Rebbeinu Shalom who gave us the timeless and eternal weapon of Limud HaTorah and Amun and Kiyum Hamitzvahs, and the biggest mitzvah that Kilo said Avos Yisrael, told us that at times of war Habal LaHargach, Hash Kaim LaHargai, and I mean let's be very let's 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 speak very bluntly. I want to ask a question, okay? What would the Vilna Gaon Paskin? What would Reb Chaim Valajan Paskin? What would the Beis Halevi Paskin? What would Reb Chaim Brisker? What would Reb Chaim Oizer? What would the Chafetz Chaim Paskin? If they were told that you have hundreds of thousands of people who want to perform a second Holocaust, Hamas said, we'll do it again and again and again. And there's no army. You have Yeshiva Bachim sitting and learning. What would be the obligation? Would the obligation be that everyone who can should take a weapon? and defend Jews and kill the enemy? Or the Chafetz Chaim would paskin, no, you should not do that. And a Rav who would paskin, guys, go sit and learn, even though there's an enemy at the door about to slaughter your children, we would call him a Shaifach Damim. This would be called Shvichiz Damim. <laughs> the Torah HaKadosh tells us, Haba Lahargach Hashkem Lahargai. And it's Shulchan Aruch for Galos, Simen Shin Chavtes, not even in Eretz Yisrael, even in Chutz Laaretz. Communities have Shaimrim. Communities have shaymrim to protect them physically. And this is communities that are Baruch Hashem basically safe. So Kol Shekim when you have a lamb surrounded by 70 wolves, is it a question that the Torah demands of us? It's not a right, it's a moral obligation. How grateful do we have to be to those who are moiser nafsham, Day in and day out, literally put their lives on the line, which allows tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of yeshiva bachim or yungalite to sit and steig in Torah and bring down the spiritual indestructible, indestructible protection of Torah, Torah and mitzvahs. This is an absolute unit and partnership and kinship. And to start questioning this side and that side, for me, it's, it's such a painful commentary. Bnei Torah. Rosh Yeshivas, Rebbes, Mashgichim, Mashpiim, spiritual leaders, Rabbanim, Talmidi Yeshivas, Avrech Kela, we should be at the forefront of unlimited Avas Yisrael, Avas HaTorah, Avas Hashem, especially, especially thinking about people who literally, literally, daily are dying, are dying. Their parents are burying these young boys who go out there for one reason. <laughs> They put their lives on the line, dying for their brothers and sisters to save Jews in Eretz Yisrael, to save our people, to save our homeland. <laughs> like the Gemara says, Reb Chaim Shmulevich said during the Yom Kippur War, he quoted the Gemara in Kedushin, Harugei Lud, Psachim, Harugei Lud, Ein kol ber yechel alamad b'mechitzasa. Ein kol ber yechel alamad b'mechitzasa. This doesn't mean, this doesn't mean, there's no disagreements about any topic. This doesn't mean that the government of Israel is sacred and holy. Far, far from it. In fact, it's the government's horrific, horrific mistakes over decades that brought disaster for Israel's security. It's obvious. 
But to be able to have such, as we say, atimut, such, uh, such a adishut, such apathy, it's, it's cold blooded, such a lack of sensitivity, and so, so inauthentic, so unreal. I mean, let's ask any question. Let me ask a question. If I'm a Rashiv and I'm in a base medrash, and I'm sitting there, and a bunch of terrorists are coming and they want to gun down every one of my bachrim and kidnap them and abduct them, what would I tell those boys? Defend yourself? Would I want that the army should come in and gun down these murderers and save my boys? I would say, nah, I don't need them. I don't need them. Come on, let's remember what happened in the Holocaust. With the Nazi invasion, country after country, and Jews, Jews were murdered in the millions. Everybody was running to find a bunker, and you hid there for a year and two years. Somebody in Auschwitz, uh, somebody was in Auschwitz, his name is Rabbi Mangel, he's still alive. He once told me, he said, you know, if you were a mouse or a rat, it was much likelier that you would get more respect and dignity in Auschwitz than if you were a Jew. Right? Jews, Jews weren't even mice. They weren't even, they weren't even rats. Helpless creatures who had nobody, nobody to protect them. And al Khazdi Hashem, that we have tens of thousands of our Jewish young brave men who are moister nafsham to protect Jewish life according to the tzivu yatayre, lo yisamad al dam reyacha, hatzolus nafashas. We are so grateful to Rebbein Shalem and so grateful to each and every single one of them who puts their life on the line, especially when I could sit and wake up in the morning and go to my Vesmedesh, go by yeshiva, and, and learn a Rajbah, and learn a Rambam, and kachzuchin a zvachim, or a chulun, or a baba basra, or a masechta brachas, or learn any part of Torah that I'm learning. I mean, yeah, I think this is like, <laughs> this is like uh, uh, olive bays of, of, of Jewish wisdom. If anybody heard anything new here, I would actually be shocked. Forgive me if I'm just repeating like what we knew for thousands of years. Right, there's hundreds of thousands that are being most in Nefesh. So uh, hundreds on the of one thousand, hand, literally hundreds, hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of, and, 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 and so what, what happened to Menschlichkeit? You know, there's something called Menschlichkeit. Seichel. Huh? Seichel. Seichel, basic human emotion. <laughs> Fathers who die and their wives are widows and their children are going to be growing up without a father. Bachrim, little boys, young boys who die and their parents have to bury them. Like, there's so much pain in the Jew, among the Jewish people now. The minimum, the minimum is go give a hug, give an embrace, say a prayer, connect, feel. Isn't the Yisoyda Yisoydas of the whole Klal Yisrael? What did Hillel is? I can't learn it, no? What did Hillel tell the convert, the non Jew, in Mesech the Shabbos Daf Laman Aleph? What's Kola Terukula? Love, kindness, generosity. Every Toysvis, every Ramban, every Rajb, every Rambam, every Rebbe Kiveig, every Birch Shmuel, every Rebbe Chaim, every Griz is a commentary on Avas Yisrael. You know what, my dear friend? When Yiddishkeit is missing a neshama, when Yiddishkeit is missing Avas Yisrael, in the name of Torah, we can develop a sense of apathy, alienation, indifference, and really, really deviate from basic, basic Judaism, common sense, humanism, and everything that Torah humanity. tried to bring to the world. You, you, okay. you, you, you Menschlichkeit. The Rambam says in Hilchus Hanukkah, Kol HaTorah nitna lasas shalom ba'ilam. Right. So, so, <laughs> Kol Yisrael so, so, ha-Ravens. Right. You know what it says in Zoya? Geval de Zoya, Parshas Noyach. It says, even Avram Avinu lived before Matan Torah. He didn't do it the right way. Because he prayed for Zdoim to be saved because of the tzaddikim who lived in Zdoim. He says, Moshe Rabbeinu got it right. Moshe mm-hmm. Rabbeinu asked Hashem to forgive even those who made a terrible mistake. He said, that, that's the vision of a Jewish leader. That's the vision of Matan Taira. Very, very nice, very nice. So on, on the one end, we have a Shmira, but on the other hand, we need to protect ourselves. Both are absolutely required. I will tell you on your first point that you started out that these things should be Pasha. We were talking at the Shabbos table and one of my daughters asked, what's going to be this week's show on headlines? And I said, should we have gratitude to the soldiers and she said, well, what's the question? <laughs> and the conversation kind of ended right there. I didn't know what to say. But, but in any case, if, it's, if we're it's saying- It's not only that, then, it's the same mitzvah. Maybe somebody would say, you know, uh, should we put on tefillin during the war? Should we wear tzitzes during the war? Should we keep Shabbos during the war? This is the Kayach of Amisol, the Zelba Eberstedt, the same Rebbeinah Shalom, 
who gave me a mitzvah vali madatem oisam as bnechem vidi bartabom vagisa ba yoimam valayla, gave the Jewish people a mitzvah essay minatayda, the greatest mitzvah to save Jewish lives through physical means. <laughs> right. So, so what's, when what's people like, are learning, huh? when people are learning, and they're supporting Klali Shal by learning. There's a Shmira. There's also a huge Shmira for those on the battlefield. We have a concept of mitzvah trichas kavana. I'm, I'm wondering if that should be necessary when those who are learning that they have to have in mind, I'm not learning because it's the thing to do. I'm not learning because I simply enjoy it. People do. It's the thing to do when he's learning. In order to have that Shmira, do they have to have the intention that we are learning on behalf of Kal Yisha, that we're learning on behalf of the Chayalim that are being more or nefesh for us right now? I think that whenever a Jew is engaged in Torah, it strengthens all of the Jewish people. Kal Yisrael, Arevim, Zebaza, Arevim, also, as the Baal Shem Tov said, we're mixed, we're integrated, we're one. The Yerushalmi Masechet and Darim compares the Jewish people to one body. And whenever you strengthen any limb in the body, all of the limbs get strengthened, the circulation gets strengthened. So that's why the, the Medrash Rabbin Parshas told us, they asked about, they asked Bilam Ben Ba'ir and Avnimus Hagardi about how you can defeat the Jewish people. And they famously gave that answer, Akol Kol Yaakov HaYadayim of Basically, Yaakov Avin, Yitzchak Avinu was saying, Hakol Kol Yaakov HaYadayim of if the Kol Kol Yaakov is powerful, as it says over there, Kol Mansha Tinoikos Mitzavtsefin, as the Tinoikos, as the Jewish children are sitting in the Batre Medrash and learning Torah, so then Yidei Esav will ultimately be defeated. In other words, the fact that the Jewish people are connected to Hashem, who is the source of eternity through Torah and mitzvahs, that itself constitutes a tremendous flow of spiritual connection and divine energy and salvation for the Jewish people. And that's why we're here thousands, thousands of years later. What did we have that all the other great empires that tried to defeat us didn't have? And the answer is, says, You want to kill the Jewish people? God says, no problem, kill me first. <laughs> kill the Rebbeinah Shalom after you finish killing him, then you'll be able to kill the Jewish people. But certainly, when somebody has, just like in mitzvahs, there's different levels of doing mitzvahs, right? There's some shittas that many mitzvahs, ain't shuch is kavon, a it's a big sugi in Shulchan Aruch and Arachayim, sugi in Brachis, and other places, mitzvahs shuch is kavon. The bottom line is, there's different layers and ways of doing mitzvahs. There's shaloy lishman, there's lishma, just like in Torah itself. So I think when somebody has more kavon, when somebody has more intention, and when somebody really connects with all of our brothers and sisters and really you know, I, I, I'm davening for you and I'm learning for you and I'm thinking about you. It's, it's much more powerful. It's much more potent. Right. Absolutely. And certainly when it comes to davening, certainly when it comes to davening, even more so, the whole concept there, davening without, uh, without kavane is like a goof without a neshama. It's like a... Like kavane, it's, goof, neshama, the shalosh says. And there's also the famous Reb Chaim, Chidush Reb Chaim Alevi al Rambam, one of the first Reb Chaims on Rambam and Hilchis Hilchis Tfila, the contradiction of Rambam, and Reb Chaim explains that the basic kavona in davening of Dalif Nemi Yata Oimed is not just a t'nai in davening, it's the chefts of davening, realizing that I'm in a relationship with Hashem. It's not about saying words, it's about a relationship. And when I'm davening, like the Rambam says in the beginning of Hilchis Tfila, it's really turning to Hashem for my needs. And what are the greatest needs of a Jew, especially during such a time, such a time of war, such a time of crisis? It's the need for victory. It's the need for the Dan Natsach. It's the need that the Jewish people should come out unharmed, unscathed, that every one of our soldiers should return home safely, that one of our hostages should return home safely, and that we should be able to have the Kayach to defeat the evil and the terror and the enemy absolutely and unequivocally and completely for good. That's, right, that's, so, that's the tefillah of the day. That's the tefillah of the day. Shachris, Mincha, Mayrev. And a Jew should not underestimate you know, the, the, these powers. Sometimes they look small and insignificant and it's just spiritual stuff. And yeah, it's true. I'm not on the front lines of the battlefield. It's true. My life is not in danger on the same level like the soldier. It's a whole different Indian. It's a, it's a special schus. It says in Sfarim, Smach Zvulim Betseisecha V'Yisacha Bo'yelecha. So the Targum Unkelos says it's about war. Zvulim goes to war, and Yisacha protects the home front through spirituality. So the Mepharshim says, so why is Zvulim mentioned first? And the answer is because the only reason Yisacha could sit and learn and protect the home front spiritually, it's because Zvulim goes to war. So we have to realize what is happening here. These boys, these young men, or older men, middle-aged men, who are sacrificing everything is what allows the country to function. It's what allows us to daven, to learn, to do mitzvahs. 
It's not just hakaris hataif. Even if you pass me a box of tissues, I should have a hakaris hataif. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you give a donation to my organization, I should have a... This is much more than hakaris hataif. I feel even the word hakaris hataif is a cheap word. Come on, hakaris hataif. Hakaris hataif, if somebody helps me when my car is broken and so somebody gives me a lift from shul because I'm tired, I have hakaris hataif. I have to, this is much more than hakaris hataif. They'd be giving them a kiss and a hug every time we see them. And much more than that. These are people who are... Their friends are dying on a daily basis. They're burying their friends. Do we understand the pain that these families are going through? What's the pain of parents burying children? Like, I just want us to go back to the basic Jewish heart, the basic human heart. You can't be a Jew without that. You know, I'm, I'm going to say something painful. The Gemara says in Yuma that sometimes I could learn Torah and the Torah becomes Sam Chayim. And sometimes I could learn Torah and the Torah becomes Sam Hamavas. The Torah, it's a quote from Chazal, Nasa loy sam hamavas. it becomes poison for me. The Torah is not poison, chas v'shalom, but it poisons me. You know why? Because in the name of Torah, I can become cruel. I can use Torah to justify indifference, apathy, cold-bloodedness, stupidity, selfishness, narcissism, in the name of Torah. That's why we need to teach Torah with an neshama, Torah needs pnimius. Torah needs a soul. Torah needs avas yisrael. You know what the Vilna Gaon writes? So this is a litvish shavart. It's not a chassidish shavart. It's from the Vilna Gaon. <laughs> you can't accuse him of being chassidic. The Vilna Gaon writes, I believe it's his commentary on Mishli. He says, the Gemara says about B'kama daf Yudzayin, ain mayim el Torah. Torah is compared to water. Why water? I mean, water is beautiful. We live from water. Why water? You know what he says? Something powerful. The Gaon says, when you water a plant, or a shrub, or a tree, or a bush, a vegetable, the water will not determine what will grow. Whatever you planted and what you cultivated in the earth, that is what's going to grow. The water will help, it will irrigate that which you planted, and whatever you planted will be'ezer Hashem come to the fore and sprout and blossom. If you planted apples and oranges and esroigim and watermelon and cantaloupe and olives and cherries and grapes and blueberries, gavaldic. And if you planted weeds and if you planted thorns, that's what's going to grow. So the Vilna Gaon says, Ein mayim ela Torah. Torah is mayim. Whatever is inside of me, the Torah is going to cause to blossom and grow. If I that's am gonna, if what's I gonna am bring an it out. unrefined person, if I did not work on my midas, if my Ava Sisral is not alive and burning, you know what's going to happen? The Torah is going to bring out more arrogance, more selfishness, more haughtiness, more superficiality. And if you're a worked out person, if you work on yourself, if you're an Ovid Hashem, if you understand that the it's all about cultivating love, sensitivity, respect, finding the soul in yourself, seeing the soul in every Jew. Every Jew is a chelik, eleika, mimal, mamish, as Tanya says. Then the Torah will cause you to become ah, a person of splendor and love and divinity and clarity and spirituality. And you become, you become a, a glorious source of light and love and connection. And you know what else? Right now in Eretz Yisrael, there's a hysterus for every Dover Shebekdusha that there wasn't in decades. Maybe since 1967 or even earlier. 60 years there wasn't such a hysterus. Dafke by the crowd we call secular. Dafke by the crowd of the kibbutzim. Dafke by those who a few weeks, a few months ago weren't sure if they loved this land, if they loved this Judaism with all the demonstrations. There's such a hysterus by the soldiers of everybody else. There's such an opportunity for Harvats and Satur. There's such an opportunity for Kiddush Shem Shalom. There's such an opportunity for Achdus, for Avas Hashem, Avas Hashem, Avas Hashem. So who should be at the front lines of this initiative? The Bnei Torah, who had the schus to grow up with Torah, to grow up with mitzvahs, to grow up with Amunah, to grow up with Tfilah, to grow up with Avas Yisrael. We, we should be at the front lines, every single one of us, embracing, loving, comforting, giving chizuk, inspiring, teaching, listening, connecting. Lev Yisrael Eru, Klal Yisrael is an Eisterus. This needs to be harnessed. At Shatech, like the Ramban says. It could be harnessed. But if I'm living in my bubble, 
And then my bubble becomes bigger every day and I become more self-centered and more arrogant and more alienated. That's the calling of Torah in this time. <laughs> Absolutely not. So, so let me ask a question. I got an email from my brother-in-law and he's very concerned about these issues. And he wants to know what to think about those that unfortunately have these views. We have to stay away from, we have, we have to distance from the Chayalim. We don't, we shouldn't daven for them. We shouldn't have a karasato because we're concerned that our children are going to get sucked into that way of life and whatever the other concerns they have. And he says, there's these are organizations and I, I can't relate to them anymore once they have this view. But does that mean I should discard them and I should discard as well those Russia yeshiva in the United States that came out as fairly negative against the Chayalim, or should, is there a way that we can take the good and leave the bad? But it's a difficult thing. How do we relate to people who just can't see that Ahava nowadays and are so negative about what they should be so positive about? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to make me cry now. Let me tell you something. If for me, making my children proud B'nai Torah and infusing my home and my family and my students with Avas HaTorah, Avas Hashem, comes at the expense of not having the ability to embrace, hug, kiss, love, show gratitude, feel empathy with people who sacrifice their life every single day to save these children, to save these students from an enemy. Hamas said we will do it again and again. If Hamas had it their way, Khalila, what would happen, Simchas Torah, would happen three times a day, Shachas Min Chamaidev, and for Hamas it would be Simchas Torah every day until they would burn, torture, rape, destroy every one of the 6.6 .6 million Jews in Eretz Yisrael. Hashmet Lada Galabit, Chas V'Shalom Hoyo And they'd continue from here. Out of Israel. And then they would continue out of Israel and visit us in Los Angeles and New York, London, Paris, and anywhere else where there's a Jew. So these soldiers are coming to protect me and you and all of our students and all of our children and grandchildren from these Rishoyim Arurim Nazis that have the glee in torturing and destroying every single Jew and burning them alive. The worst episodes of Jewish history, the worst things that we thought were, you know, Zichroinis, we may cat them, we read about them on Tisha B'Av, have come back in Tov Shin Pei Dalet, October 7th, 2023. If for me, being a Yid, being a Yerei Shamayim, being an Eved Hashem, being a Loi Metoyim Ekaim Mitzvah means that I deprive my children and my students from loving and appreciating these people who are Moiser Nafshom B'Poyal. That ankle barrier, Chayla Lamad the Mechit Sosa, dying, giving their lives, looting the future of their entire lives in Elam Hazar for one thing, for Avas Yisrael, for Kedushas Hashem, for Atzolas Am Yisrael. If this is what Torah brings us to, well, all I can say is, Achun Vey to all my Shiurim, Oy Vavoy to all my Yerushamayim and all my Torahs. It's the exact opposite. If I feel our Torah is so insecure, that if for me to pray and say thank you to my soldiers is going to cause my students to say, hey, why am I learning Gemara? Why am I learning Mishnayis? Why am I learning Chumash? Why am I putting out Tefillin? Why am I davening Mayrev? Hey, let me just go to Gaza and get a life. Wow, what education am I giving my students? <laughs> what relationship to Torah? If our Torah is so flimsy, is so insecure, is so skin deep, if our commitment to it is so impoverished, it's so frail, that for me to say thank you to these warriors, to these heroes, I think we need to make a big cheshben anafesh and ask ourselves, what Judaism are we teaching? <laughs> Absolutely agree. Well, Rabbi Jacobson, I didn't mean to depress you, especially our first time talking. You didn't depress me. You did not depress me, and I'll tell you why. I believe truth prevails. <laughs> I think this is the basis of Yiddish. Emes me eretz tetzmach. Truth prevails. When we say Hashem is eternal, it means Hashem alakim emes. Truth is eternal. Truth prevails. What's going to prevail in the Jewish world is Avas Yisrael, Avas Hashem, Avas Atayra. 
I grew up at the feet of the Lubavitch Rebbe. He did not stop saying, these three loves are one. If you love Hashem, you love a Jew. If you love a Jew, you love Torah. If you love Torah, you love Hashem and the Jewish people. They're inseparable. That's what's going to prevail because that's the truth. That's the truth of every Jew. And that's why I say we never separate from Jews. We never cut off Jews. We never disregard Jews. Just like when we look at a secular Jew, and we know most of them are Tinoikis Shanishbu. They didn't grow up with it. They didn't have a chinuch to it. On the contrary, some of them had a very chinuch that was very anti religious. So the Rambam says in Hilchis Mamrim, Tzarech Lamashcham Ba'ava. You have to draw them in in love. May I say this, and I don't know if I'll get in trouble, but okay, it won't be the first thing I say that gets me in trouble. We have religious Jews who are also Tinoikis Shanishbu. You understand, Rabari? I absolutely understand. From Yidin who are Tinoikis Shanishbu. I have seen Bachrim who were indoctrinated with such venom to Israeli soldiers. I'll tell you, Amaisa, I was giving a drush. <sighs> it's, it's, but it's, it is, it's, the, it's the painful, not depressing, it's painful. I was giving a drush, and a few bach, and I spoke about, this was years ago, I spoke about the gratitude. I, I spoke, I chazed over a title from Rabbi Yeshua Leib Diskin. Rabbi Yeshua Leib Diskin was known as the Sodaf of Brisk. He was the Rav of Brisk. He made Aliyah to Yerushan, considered one of the Ge'inei Hador, the son of Rabbi Shua Leib. You heard of Rabbi Shua Leib Diskin. He was in Yerushalayim. They still have the Tzedaka Beis HaYisayim Diskin. Everybody still gets it in the mail, probably. We got it for years. In any case, so there's a Torah of his, in Parish Shema, it's about Dasar and Avira. It's a Gevaldike Torah. Why they didn't die by Makas Chayshech. Why did Dasar, everybody, all the Rishayim died. Why didn't they die? And he explains something fascinating. That... Uh, because they were ready to be bit, beaten for the Jews. They were the shaitrim who were beaten by the Egyptian commandos not to torture the Jews, to bring more straw. Sholeb Diskin says they weren't just Rishayim who were living in an ivory tower. They cared for the Jewish people. They were at the Kursim, they were Rishayim. And therefore they did not die in Makas Chayshech. They had Yitzis Mitzrayim, they had Kriyas Yamsov. It's a fascinating, so I said it over. And I said, this is even Dasan and Aviram who were Rishayim, Api Kursim. They ended up using every opportunity to stage a revolt against Moshe, and they ended up with Kairach swallowed up. I said, when you're talking about people who are ready to be beaten and killed for the Jewish people, and they're not a person, they're cute, innocent, beautiful, angelic 19-year-olds who need ava, need closeness, and our Tinoikas Shanish would have beautiful, beautiful, glowing souls, how much connection we should feel with them. And a few boys walked out in the middle of my speaking. Okay. Fine, my ego didn't like it, but it's not the end of the world. <laughs> Afterwards, they came over to me and they said, you know what, Ari, I, I, I don't want to say this. I don't think a Jew should even repeat these words. I'm going to say it because I want to tell you why they're Tinekas Shanishbu. They said to me, they, these people you were talking about, they hate us more than the Arabs. They hate religious Jews more than the Arabs. You hear, Ari? I looked at these boys. I almost started to cry. And I said, you know what my bracha to you is? That if you guys get lost, you shouldn't get with a car. You're in a car and you get lost. My bracha is that you don't get lost in Ramallah. And you don't get lost in Shechem. And you don't get lost in some neighborhood in Hebron but you get lost near an Israeli army base. <laughs> That's my only blessing to you. That's my only blessing to you. And I hope one day you'll understand what I'm saying. And I hope you don't have to understand what I'm saying through a visceral experience. And then I realized, wow, these poor yeshiva bachra sitting in a base medrash on a gemara all day and being poisoned with such lies, with such blood libels, against these poor soldiers who are burying their friends and sacrificing them to save these bach, to help to save these bach. That's how they, that's, and that's how they're speaking. And these are the people who are supposed to teach Yiddish and present Yiddish. Imagine I'm a secular Jew, and this is my exposure to Judaism. I buried my 19-year-old friends, my three buddies in my platoon I buried to protect these people. And all I can hear is that, oh, you hate us more than the Arabs? This is a yeshiva bachin? What do I say? I didn't stop talking to them, but I knew they're tinoikas shenizhbu. Unfortunately, 
there are groups in our communities who are very, very misguided. Their Yiddishkeit has been divorced from Avas Yisrael. Their Yiddishkeit has been divorced from common sense. Their Yiddishkeit has been divorced from Menschlichkeit. Their Yiddishkeit has been divorced from the Yisoid HaYisoidus of Yiddishkeit. That every Neshama is a Chelek Eloika Mimal Mamish, and every Yid is a Ben Yochid of the Riboy Neshaloylam. Ben Kachu, Ben Kachatam Kroyim Bonam, and Avas Yisrael is the most natural, innate, organic element of the Jewish soul. And it does not mean that I'm not Makbir on Shulchan Aruch. It does not mean I'm not Yerushalayim. Fakert! Fakert! Throughout history, the greatest Yirei Shamayim were the ones who had the greatest Avas Yisrael. I had the schus to see a huge tzaddik in my life and some other tzaddikim. The greatest Avas Yisrael came from the biggest Yerushalayim. If you have real Yerushalayim, you see Hashem everywhere. How could you not see the Kedusha in every Jew? And if I may say, I hate to say, learn from Hamas. Hamas destroyed with the same glee, the most right-wing and the most left-wing, atheistic, liberal, progressive, modern, pro-Palestinian Jew. The same simcha, the Jews who were fighting for, for, for connectivity and brotherhood with our cousins in Gaza, they were the ones who were murdered. With the same glee, with the same passion. Why? Because just like Haman and just like Hitler and Machshamam, they sense the Kedusha in every Jew. And that's what drives them crazy. That's what they want to destroy. May Let's learn from our enemies what a Yid is. They want to hunt down every Jew in hate. You know what our job is? And foremost, the Bnei Torah and the Rosh Hashivas to hunt down every Jew with love, with infinite love. Very beautiful, Rabbi Jacobson. Very beautiful. Obviously an important message. And hopefully this show will be sent around in the yeshivas because they do listen. And hopefully this will be heard and uh, incorporated into their beings because it's very important to hear this. Yeah, Thank you so much for joining us. It's, really appreciate it's it. It's so important. A Yiddish guy that's not based on Emes La Mitoy, <laughs> that's not what we sacrifice our lives for 4,000 years to preach a Yiddish guy that's not based on Emes La Mitoy. A Yiddish Absolutely. guy that's afraid of reality. <laughs> a Yiddish guy that has to close its eyes and say, oh, we can say thank you to the doctor who made the surgery and saved their life. <laughs> We're not going to say thank you to the doctor because everybody might become doctors. <laughs> Imagine if a yeshiva bacha was saved by a doctor and we give, make a suda saidah and we give a special plaque to the doctors like they do constantly in Williamsburg and in Muncie and in Lakewood and in Israel. Oy, our whole house, they're all going to become, everybody's going to leave the base medicine and become doctors. Okay, now I understand there's a culture of the army and there's a culture of Tzahal and there's a culture of the soldiers and many Bachram who went out. There were various challenges in Yerushalayim. I get it. I, I know the challenges. I know the issues. But let's understand the reality that we are real, real partners with all the challenges and our job today is our job today is to bring Torah to everybody. Not to cut off 70% of Klal Yisrael by calling them Rishayim. Chas v'shalom. Right, absolutely. Thank you so much, Rabbi Jacobson. Very important messages that we re re received. We from must you. remain ambassadors of love, light, and clarity. Never to stoop down to levels of argumentation and hate and toxicity and negativity because we all lose. This is not about an ego thing. Rabbi Yahweh said, said this, this rabbi said this, this rabbi said this, he said this. This is not about sensationalism. This is too serious of a time. Our nation is at war. So many Jews have been murdered and slain. So many are in captivity. So many of our kids are on the front lines. This is not a time of sensationalism. This is a time of infinite clarity, decisiveness, resolve, resilience, faith, and real achtos. Achtos that we know from Chazal and from Torah is our most powerful weapon. Beautiful. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much, you. Rabbi. May Jacobson. we see a complete victory. May we can see a complete Geula Shleima. Take it from Yad Mamash. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.